This is improv to improve on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. We will be recording this session. If you do not want to be recorded, feel free to hide your video. Otherwise you will be recorded. During the time that our speaker is presenting, we ask that everyone please remain muted. And I want to begin this evening by wishing everyone a very happy holiday, whether it's Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, or New Year, or any other holiday in between that I may have missed. I wish you all a very blessed and joyful, fun-filled with family and friends. We have this evening with us a special speaker, a great presenter, and let me just introduce you to him. Seth Greenwall, distinguished Toastmaster, also known as Sherpa Seth, is a best-selling author, a keynote speaker, and a popular communication coach for managers, creatives, and technical professionals. Seth holds degrees in mechanical engineering from the Co Cooper Union and industrial design from Pratt Institute. He has served as technical project manager in the architecture, engineering, and construction industry for more than two decades for several of the nation's largest engineering and construction organizations, including the US Army Corps of Engineers. Seth is the author of three books on creative problem solving and presentation skills. His most recent publication, An Engineer's Formula for Public Speaking Excellence, is a unique field manual for discovering one's authentic voice to lead a team with confidence, conviction, and clarity. Seth is a charter member of the PMI Westchester chapter and founder of the PMI New York City Toastmasters Club, now in District 119. He currently serves as president of an award-winning Toastmasters Club in Westchester, New York, Hudson River Toastmasters. Seth lives with his wife, son, and Uno, who he says is his always hungry dog. So without further ado, I'd like to present to you for our improv to improve your team's performance with lessons from bad art. Let's give a great round of applause to Seth Bree Greenwald. Distinguished ah. Toastmaster. I thank you very much. Take it much. away, Seth. Appreciate that uh, nice and warm introduction. How's everyone doing, my fellow Toastmasters of District 46? Good, good. Thanks uh, for coming out on this uh, virtually chilly night. Uh, are you ready to have some fun with me tonight? Thumbs up. Re th real thumbs up if you're ready to have some fun. All right. Nice. All right. So. As Evelyn said, I am uh, Seth Greenwald. I am the president of Hudson River Toastmasters in Westchester, Ostmi, New York, and I'm happy to be here and uh, give you my webinar, Improve to Improv to Improve Your Team's Performance with Lessons from Bad Art. Let's just jump in, shall we? Here we go. All right, so hello, hola, ciao, bonjour. You see all the languages I speak? Do you speak any of these languages? What we want to do is start off by uh, introducing ourselves in the chat box. I know we're all virtual, but we can still communicate. So in the chat box, why don't you tell us who you are, where you are now, and your home club. So let's all take a minute and chat with each other in the chat box. Hey, Ron. Good to you. Hey, Deb. Christina. Hey. Nice to meet you. Let's 
few more people out there. Barbara, how's it going? Aloha, Jim, New Jersey, way out in New Jersey. Is anyone, is anyone from like China? Like, you, you know, there's a lot of other, uh, hello. I wish I knew what that said up on the upper left. Probably says hello. All right, Evelyn, hello. Hello, hello. All right, very good, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey, you, how you doing? My home club of Hudson River. All right, so let's just get going. I'm going to mash up a few things. Those two things are my favorite things in the world. That would be art and design, communication and leadership. When you mash those things up, you get top-notch teamwork. You can wow your audience. And how we're gonna do that, we're gonna talk about flow. We're gonna talk about authenticity. We're gonna talk about something I call the build it together mindset. And I'm telling you, if Toastmasters is your toolkit, then improv is your power tool. It's exciting. I just stumbled on improv and it's made an incredible difference in my life. In fact, I have a confession to tell you. If you, if you get close, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell just you guys, are you ready? So my confession is that uh, improv, improvisational communication showed me how to open up my mind to all that's possible and gave me the confidence to chase after my life's big, hairy, audacious goals. Don't you want that for yourself? So today, I want you to make your future self proud. The way you're gonna do that is to make the choice to use improv to improve the trajectory of your career and your life for the better. Give me a yes, give me a thumbs up, give me a yes in the chat box if my confession resonates with you. My personal convention, uh, confession. All right, Maurice. Okay, thank you. This is what we're gonna talk about today, tonight. Toastmasters rocks, of course it does, especially District 46. I'm gonna give you three lessons from bad art. Why? Because bad art is more informative than good art, apparently. Improv to improve, we're gonna talk about what that means. We're gonna have a, a fun-filled breakout improv exercise, a group session at the end. Then we're gonna talk about next steps. All right. Here we go, here we go. So a little bit about me. Postmaster has changed my life. I've been an active member for 12 years now, club president three times, area director two. I've been a division director. I've been a conference chair for District 46. And I am a frequent speaker in, uh, around the world, especially with this Zoom culture. I uh, spoke a few weeks ago to a a Toastmasters group in Italy, and they said, hey, can you start a club for engineers? Because I'm an engineer. And I said, yeah, just fly me out to Rome and I'll do whatever you want. So I'm waiting for that invitation, but it's fantastic. I love to speak. Who knew I would be doing this 12 years ago? The power of Toastmasters, you know, I'm, a, I'm an author. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to write books on creativity. I'm a designer, I'm an engineer. I went to school for engineering and uh, industrial design. I write books on creativity. But Toastmasters has helped me to also be a speaker. I'm known as Sherpa Seth. I create workshops, courses. Last year, I took up 20 students on a course called Page to Stage. I just want to do the page part, but uh, apparently Toastmasters has given me the power to keep on moving forwards. So let's do that. Let's just dig into the bad art lesson number one. Who's ready? Everyone ready? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Real thumbs. Okay, here we go. I think you'll enjoy this. So everywhere I go, I like I love traveling and I see beauty everywhere. I'm up in Westchester. The Hudson River is a beautiful vista right near me. There's uh, like uh, Block Island in Long Island. There's a Long Island Sound. Fantastic. And even a bunch of soybean fields in eastern Maryland where I vacationed a few months ago. It's so beautiful out there. I love it. I love, I love this world and 
Unfortunately, when you have beauty, you also have ugliness. And a lot of times it's man-made. You have art, you have this thing in the middle, this piece of sculpture in San Diego. And the, and the thing on the right, it's literally a piece of Swiss cheese. No, it's literally a children's museum in China. I mean, I wouldn't even want my son to look at that. It's very scary. So there's bad art all over the place. But you know, I'm a continuous learner. And I'm sure you are too. Uh, I learn from everything. Bill Nye says you can, you can learn from anyone. Wordsworth says you can learn from the nature. Dr. Sue says, just keep your eyes open and you'll learn anytime, anywhere. Kaizen means uh, continuous improvement. That's why I wrote this uh, presentation because we can learn from anything, especially bad art. But here is good art. Edward Hopper was a American realist in the early part of the 20th century. This is one of his famous canvases. It's called, are you ready for this? Hill with Lighthouse. That's, that's good, right? Nice and creative. It's because he was known as the master of light and shadow. And he didn't play around. It was a hill, it's a lighthouse. He painted, he represented reality in a beautiful way. Now, here's Jackson Pollock. He was an abstract expressionist in the early part of the uh, 20th century. And he doesn't, he's not representing reality. What he's representing is emotional reality, his emotions. He's going in instead of out. And you know what? This painting was very descriptive. It was called Painting Five. And in 1948, he painted it. You know how much it was worth in 2006? It was the most expensive painting ever sold at $140 million. So a lot of people like this. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people pay a lot of money. I'm not here to tell you whether you like it or not, whether it's good or bad. It's very subjective. Art is very subjective. You make up your own mind. What I'm here to tell you is not to focus on the art, but let's focus on what Jackson Pollock said about the art. He said, and I quote, when I'm in my painting, I'm not aware of what I'm doing. It's only when I lose contact with the painting that the result is a mess. What's he talking about in? be in a painting. Well, you know, I think I understand what he, he's talking about. Because when I was commuting into the city, I worked for the Army Corps of Engineers for, I still work for them uh, for 12 years. And I was writing my book. I had 55 minutes to write. And it was an amazing experience because all I did was just start writing. And it, it takes a little time. But I, I just started writing and I wrote and wrote. And after a few minutes, my muse would come and I would just be a vessel for writing down the words. The words would just come into my brain and my function was simply to capture those words. It's a state called flow. And I think it's inspired me in so many different ways. Everything I do is about flow. Everything I do is about being in the present moment. And everything I produce is only because of flow. Now, it's a very immersive state. Mihaly, I just call him uh, Mickey C. He's a Hungarian-American psychiatrist. And he said flow is being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. Now, the key here is that it's for its own sake. You're in the present moment. Time stops. You don't feel anything. It's just you're completely immersed and it's it's such a beautiful feeling and it's it's called flow how do you do that flow for toastmasters you just got to remember that you are in the present moment right your body's in the present moment but your mind might not be it might be in the past it might be in the future so what and this you know this is a crash course on I'm trying to experience flow but what you want to do as Toastmasters is simply write, is simply speak, is simply listen. You do that now. You don't, you know, later you edit. Later you think. Later you evaluate. Okay, it's, it's you know, it's a very basic concept, but it's 
incredibly powerful if you can do it. If you can stay in the present moment, if you can focus on flow, I encourage you to do such a thing. Do or not do. There's no try. Just do it. One of my favorite uh, slogans from Nike, just do it. Just do it. Just stay in the present moment. Don't worry about what's going on in the past or the future. And you know what? It's not only that you can get into flow, it's your team you can get into flow. You can get into flow with other people. I do this all the time at the Army Corps of Engineers. I do it with my customers. I do it with my stakeholders. I do it with my vendors. In negotiations, feasibility, charrettes, pitches. It's so, it's, it's taken over my life because it's such a powerful experience. It's a win-win situation for you. It's a win-win situation for your team, for your customer. So your team's A game is made in group flow. Now, speaking of uh, A game, let me show you something. It's not only about art that you can find flow, you can find it in sports. Let me set the stage. I'm gonna show you a video clip from the Yankees versus the Oakland A's in American League Division Series. Uh, the A's were up two games to zero and it looked like if they had won this game, they were going to the, the next phase, which would be one step below the World Series. And it looked like the A's had this game in the bag. It was one to nothing. It was a top of the eighth inning. And it, oh, let me, let me stop talking. Let me just, let me just show you this, this video clip. It's called the Jeter Flip. Derek Jeter, shortstop. Doesn't have a stolen base the entire season, so you're not going to run. You're not going to hit and run. you got to wait for a gapper. That is fair down the right field line. Giambi on his way to third, and they're going to wave him around. The throw misses a cutoff, man. Shot into the plate. Out of the plate. Did you see that? Did you see what was a shortstop doing on the first base side? He's supposed to be on the, uh, the shortstop side, but he saw that the ball was not cut off by the first baseman. It wasn't cut off by the right fielder. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He flipped it to the catcher. The catcher, uh, Gachiambi, it stayed 0-0. Zero, zero. The Yankees scored. And they won that game. The one, they won the next two games. And ultimately, they went, they went to the World Series all because of Derek Jeter with one of the most unbelievable plays you will ever see by a shortstop. Both cut off. All because of flow. Derek Jeter was in the right place at the right time because he was in sync with what was going on. He was in flow. And I want that for you. So bad, bad art takeaway number one, bad art happens when the artist is out of touch with their art. Teams work best when members are in sync, in time, and in flow with each other. Okay, so that's what we learned from Mark in sports. Flow. You ready? Are you ready to go to uh, bad art lesson number two? Who's ready? Everyone still up? Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, this is fun. This is one of my favorite lessons. All right, here we go. Marcel Duchamp, there he is, smoking that stogie. He was a surrealist in the early part of the 20th century. He called himself Armut. We don't know why he called himself that. It's probably because he was just a true original. One of his famous quotes was, I have forced myself to contradict myself in order to avoid conforming to my own taste. What are you talking about, Marcel? What are you talking about? Look, I, I think I think I understand what he's what he's saying. What he's saying is this: I have a fountain, and I'm going to show it in a museum in Philadelphia in 1917. It's beautiful, right? I'm going to call it the fountain. I'm going to put my name Armut on it. It's it's lovely, right? Is it is it bad art? Is it art? Well, that's the question that everyone had back in 1917 because they never seen such a thing. This thing is actually not a fountain. This thing, believe it or not, is a men's urinal. 
he took a men's urinal off of the wall and put it in a museum. It's called Ready Made. And for someone to be able to see the beauty in a urinal, it's quite amazing. How, how, does, how did Duchamp do it? He saw clearly. Look at those eyes. He's looking right through you. Just like Jake Sully of Avatar, they're looking right through. They're looking at you. Look at that. And how do they do that? They don't judge. They don't evaluate. They don't compare. All they do is see what's in front of them. It's easier said than done. Let, for example, let's say you want to look at a beauty full tree. There it is, it's right in front of you. But not right in front of you, because between your eye and that tree are the, your ideas about the tree. Okay? You can be thinking about what. What type of tree is that? How old is that tree? You know, where are the other trees? When it, it's, there's, there's a lot of ideas floating in your brain and the perception from your eye has to go through your mind and it can cause you not to see what's in front of you, clearly. How do you do it? How do you see with fresh eyes? Well, you see what's in front of you. You have to stay in time and you see without prejudice. Right? Easier said than done. That's how you do it. And if you do do that with your team, if you can interact with your team with an open mind, with fresh eyes, you see others as they are, you hear what's being said, you don't shy away from conflicting perspectives, you learn from everyone, and you co create an atmosphere of honesty and trust. Right? It's all about team. You know that acronym, T-E-A-M? Together, everyone achieves more. I wholeheartedly believe that. Because if you can create a culture of authenticity, you're halfway there. So what do we learn? That our takeaway sometimes what at first looks like bad art is not. Teams work best when they interact without judgment and communicate in an honest and authentic manner. All right. You having fun yet? All right, here we go. One last takeaway, one last lesson from bad art, my favorite one. I'm a creative guy. There's a lot of creative guys and gals there. There's Picasso, there's Duchamp, there's Frankenthaler, there's Calder, they're all artists. What do these artists have in common? What do you think these artists have in common? Tell you. They create alone. There's Fred Flintstone on his island of creativity. He found his wife by channel 2,000 miles away from any uh, land, but he, he's done it. He's done it because he's creative. He likes working alone. I like working alone. I'm a DIY design guy. DIY stands for do it yourself. When I wrote my books, I was my, in, uh, by myself, even though I was in the train, I was by myself. I didn't let anyone sit next to me. When I uh, designed some furniture for Geo Geo International, I was by myself. When I designed my reading card company, I was illustrated for the cards. I was in the corner of my uh, apartment in the city, and my wife put a shoji screen around me and said, don't don't come out that's where you're going to be i said okay i liked it that way because good art is not about working in a committee artists like to work alone designers like to work alone engineers like to work alone but what i'm going to show you blew my mind just this is just a few years ago and i went to east end of london and i went to winwood walls miami blew my mind because this is graffiti but it's done by more than one artist can you believe it the windward wall says that there's more than 10 artists who created that and i'm like wow it can be done you can work collaboratively as an artist so it blew my mind it changed it changed everything and then i started to think about it 
What does this mean? Well, what it means is that you have to move from me to we. Everyone has an ego, right? Everyone wants to be right. Everyone, it's I, 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 me, me, me. It's all about me. Postmasters, I'm, I'm, it's about me. I want this. I want the attention. I want. It, I want to be right. I want. It's. I want. It, I want the attention. But if you want to move from me to we, you have to have a we go mindset as opposed to an ego. So it's kind of like a hive mentality. It's kind of collaborating together. And how do you do that? You let go. And you build something together. It's in, in, in Toastmasters analogy would be let other people onto the stage with you. Don't just be up on stage like, like I am. Let other people be on the stage with you in the spotlight. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, mindset. It's called the BIT mindset. And the important part, the important word I want you to look at is build. All right. You're building something together with someone else, with your team. So it's more of a construction project than a it's a construction project with everyone's working on at the same time. Let's not belabor the point because we have a lot to cover. So it's about team collaboration. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So what, do you, what can you build together? You can build anything together. You can build your list of requirements together. You can build your planning document together. You can design and uh, develop together. Project success. It's all about us. Now, I have a story to tell, but I'm not going to tell it. Because I want us to do something together, have more time to do it, do the stuff together, do the exercise together. So I'm an engineer in my head. I'm an artist at heart. I love formulas. Here's the formula that I want you to remember. Pretty simple, right? A plus B equals C. What does that mean, Seth? It means accept and build for collaboration. And we're going to go over that later and what exactly those words mean. Accept plus build equals collaboration. And for the poets in the, in the audience, BIT is as easy as ABC. All right. So remember that. That's a good takeaway. Speaking of takeaways, it's easy to make bad art alone because there's no one around to tell you it's bad. Teams work best when they build together with a common vision throughout the project. All right. Okay. Exciting, right? What you can learn from bad art. Is everyone still good? Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, real thumbs. All right. Hello, everyone who joined us. All right. So now we get into the meat of the matter. Let's get away from bad art. I guess, I guess we can. Yeah. All right. Drum roll. Teams work best when each member understands that they are an essential part of a larger composition and they take collaborative action to create a beautiful project masterpiece together. All right, that's the end. Or is it? Be fantastic now. So you want to be an artful leader? You want to help your team to access that magical state of flow? Right, fantastic, F-A-B, express and share their unique ideas with authenticity. And you wanna cultivate a collaborative, build it together culture to create win-win situations with your team. So flow, authenticity, build it together, I promise. We would get you to being a fantastic artful leader. All right, now, now here it is. Let's move on, improv to improve. How do we become, become fantastic? All about improv. But it's really all about Toastmasters. You know, I've been on a lot of weak teams. I've been on a lot of strong teams. One of the strong teams is at a Toastmasters meeting. Everyone's got to work together, right, to coordinate the meetings, collaborate over the agenda and organize the agenda. Toastmasters has taught me a lot about teamwork. Okay. 
I am the president of Hudson River Toastmasters. We meet second and fourth Tuesday. And I invite you to come say hi to us. So everyone knows Toastmasters meetings are divided up into prepared speeches, impromptu speaking, and evaluation and feedback. And who's with me when I say that impromptu speaking or table topics is our secret sauce? I thought prepared speeches, yeah, right? I thought prepared speeches was, was great. And then I realized that, oh my gosh, table topics is the key to everything in, in, in my career, improv to improve. So what is table topics? I said Toastmasters activity intended to help club members develop their ability to quickly organize their thoughts by responding to an impromptu question. Yes, that's what it is. But at work, Q&A is at most 20% of your total time, right? How many meetings do you have? Not that many. But, that, but that's good. Table topics is great. But what about the other 80% of your day at work? What about informal communication with your team, with your boss, with your customers? I would say it's 80% of your day. So how can we use what we're learning at table topics to speak with our colleagues? Well, I call it table topics togetherness. Tradition, traditionally, table topics is about me, right? You answer the question and you give the answer, one to two minutes, right? It's all about me. I'm on stage. I'm giving the answer. Don't interrupt me. I'm talking to you. I'm in the spotlight. I'm independent. I'm individualist. There's one answer. That's my answer. That's the right answer. But table topics togetherness, about we about speaking with, about co-creating together. It's about collaborating. It's synergistic. There's many possibilities. Don't you to change your life. Table topics, togetherness thing. It has for me. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Good question, Seth. It comes from a strange source, improvisational comedy. Weird, but you know, it's not, I'm not talking about funny. I'm talking about business, I'm not talking about funny. We're talking about having fun with your team. Okay. So impromptu communication or improv is improv minus the funny. It can be fun. It's always fun. Every day I have so much fun with my team. Because of improv, because of table topics, togetherness. It did change my career. I never would have been able to go from uh, designer to design manager, which is what I am now, without improv. No way. Practicing the art of improv will improve your team's performance. When you need to do some silo busting, people know what silo is. Each team is in their own silo, they don't talk to each other. Improv will help them talk to each other. If you're tired of so-so solutions, which is same old, same old, right? The, the team is giving the same solutions over and over again. There's no creativity. Everyone's talking. No one's listening. Our improv will help you with that a lot, listening. And your team has lost its mojo. It's lost its energy. Improv will energize your team. It's an incredible tool. This is not just, uh, I'm just not talking. This is a real, this is a real, this is a real deal. Improv always starts with two words. What is it? What are they, Seth? What are those two words? Yes. And, okay. This is the whole, this is what improv boils down to. Yes. And, yes, always comes first. Because it's about listening, not about talking. You're just listening. You're not interrupting the person you're speaking with. You're accepting what's spoken. 
That doesn't mean you agree with what they said. You're not thinking or you're or analyzing, you're listening with the flow mind. Remember the bad art lesson number one? Listening with the flow mind. You're in the now. You're on the cutting edge of time. And always follows yes. You respond in a kind and tone and energy to who you're talking to. You build on what was said. You contribute during your team. You build, very important, building, building. Not about being right or wrong, about building it together. The IT mindset, very important. So this is how improv goes. Someone starts, offers an idea. The other one accepts the idea and builds on it, A plus B equals C. Go back and forth. Yes, and, yes, and. You can, you can literally say yes, and. Or you can just think it in your mind. And what, does, what is this all about? This improv. It's maintain your BIT mindset. You move in the direction of conversation step by step. You're not thinking about where you're headed. And you don't debate or negate. You collaborate. Different type of mindset. And I'm an engineer. So here, here's another key takeaway out of improv. Order matters. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. Have you ever felt that? Like you're, you're behind the, uh, the conversational eight ball? Why is that? It's because I was doing things out of order. I wasn't listening first. So first I, I taught myself I have to listen. Then I have to think. Then I have to speak. And I repeat the process. Listening is so important. Improv teaches you how to listen. It's all about order. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like dancing, like the box step. Imagine if you did four before two, you would like fall down on your face. That's not a comfortable position to be in. So order matters. Public listening skills. Postmaster teaches you about speaking. What about listening? Improv does. Improv teaches you about listening. That's the and part. The yes part, certainly Toastmaster teaches you all about that. The and part, not as much. All right, what are the levels of yes listening? What are they? They're all levels. There's no yes, where you're just like not even tuned into what is being said. You're just thinking about something completely different. There's a maybe yes, where you're thinking, where you kind of hear what they're thinking, but you're kind of thinking about what you're going to say before you speak. And then there's the all in yes. That's where we want to go. How do we get to the all in yes? Got to clear your mind. You got to be in flow. You got to be in time. Some practical uh, steps there is take a deep breath and connect with the moment. Make eye contact. We're postmaster all about making eye contact. Follow the flow of ideas. Follow them. What is what? Are, what are they being? What is what? Are, what are they telling me? Suspend evaluating thoughts. Don't think. Don't 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 evaluate. You can't listen and think and evaluate and all at the same time. Order matters. Remain open to all ideas. All ideas are good. Improv, creativity. All ideas are good. You build on the idea. So better listening tips for evaluating at the club, at the Toastmasters club. You, you know, the closest thing to listening skills in Toastmasters is the evaluation phase, right? Well, how do you do it? You listen all in. You don't start evaluating in your head until the speech is done. When you realize your mind has gone off track, bring it back. Gently to listening. Don't criticize yourself. Listen and retain the big ideas. Don't try to over remember everything. Take simple notes while speaker is speaking. Don't try to take detailed minutes. It's not about minutes, it's about taking notes, simple notes, and still being able to listen while the speaker is speaking. On top of your game is improv. Man, change your career, change your life. 
made me a dynamic speaker, an agile leader. Agile means just flexible, made me a quick, on the spot thinker, an all in listener. I do love improv. Climb to new heights with improv. All right. Are you ready for some fun? Not funny. Not funny. We're just going to have some fun together. Who's ready? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Everyone ready to have some fun? This is the fun. This is, this is like art. That is. You're going to remember this forever. All right, here we go. All right, so I've written three books so far in my life, and they all have a title on the front cover. They all have a little synopsis on back cover. And they all have the authors uh, down below. And there's a story in the middle. That's the structure, all books. All right, so what we're going to do here we have 17 people. We're going to break up into breakout rooms, five people each. And Maurice is going to break us out in random. And what the point of this is, is to tell a story collaboratively in real time, round robin. And here's the rules. When you get into your breakout room, you're going to sign your storyteller order, right? Just shout it out. I'm one, two, three, four, five. The first person, number one, is the spokesperson. They only listen to the storytellers. So there's basically four storytellers. There's one spokesman who's listening, who's taking notes about the story. What is a select occupational group? Well, that's where the fun comes in. In your breakout room, you are going to choose this is with i promise it'll, it would be fun right and everyone is bought into the fun part okay so, so what you want to do when you first get into your uh, breakout room is to choose your order choose your spokesman and then to choose a fictional occupational group for example maybe you're a bunch of farmers maybe you're accountants race car drivers you could be uh, chefs or magicians carpenters olympic weightlifters or magicians oh, wrote magicians two times but uh, you can be any occupational group you want because it's fun to be uh, someone you're not. Don't be project managers. Don't be uh, engineers. Don't be artists. Uh, anything else you can be. All right, then you're the group of farmers or accountants, wherever you are, you start creating your story in a round robin format. And I will tell you what that means. I will tell you how to start your story in the next slide. But when you come back to the main room after five minutes, right, that you have uh, five minutes to be in the breakout room, then the spokesperson tells the story. Number one, the person number one, the big cheese, the big kahuna. He gives a synopsis of the story. Okay. Oh, what does it have to do with improv? So you always want to maintain your build it together mindset by using actual or implied yes and at start of each of your responses, right? So if you go around the room creating your story, you're thinking or actually saying yes and because you want to build on this. This is the first, this is what you're going to start with. This is the start of the story. Every breakout room, every group, every uh, group of farmers, race car drivers or chefs starts with this sentence. This is the story start. There once was a group of farmers that came upon a piece of bad art. The stunned silence. The stunned silence was suddenly broken with a, with a, uh, you know, with a whatever. You know, you, yeah, that's your thing. You got to be creative. That's, that's all. I, that's all I'm giving you. That's all you get. Now, after five minutes, you come back to the main room and you're going to pitch your story. This is a suggested timeline. For your story we don't have a lot of time because i've been speaking so much but we're going to do this we're going to do this and what you're going to do is the spokesperson is going to give the team name you have to come up with a team name as if it's not hard enough already so you have to come up with a team name you tell us your occupational group farmers race car drivers olympic weightlifters um, 
lambs. I, I don't know. It could be any. It could be any. All right. Then you give the uh, the authors names, right? The group of people in your group. The spokesman tells us who was in their group. You get the story title. Oh my goodness! What are you doing to us? To have to come up with a title as well. Yeah, you got to come up with a title. And then you give a synopsis, right? That you have 60 seconds, 60 s, 60 seconds to give the synopsis of the story because it's not about taking minutes, it's about overview. So everyone, does everyone know? So well, I know that everyone's completely confused. So we're gonna do two groups of six. Oh, six yes. people in a group. That's not so bad. Two groups of six. All right, so let me go to two guests. So. And there are instructions in the chat for those that would like. If you navigate to the chat, you'll be able to see a image, which is instructions one and instructions two, which will give you an image of the actual screenshot with the directions that you're going to use in your breakout room. Right. I'm going to go ahead and open the breakout room. Maurice will give you this slide, and he's going to give you this slide in your breakout rooms. So take it away, Maurice. Everyone's good? Anyone Anyone have a quick question about what you're gonna do? Yes, Barbara. Do you have to use your beginning came upon a piece of bad art? No. I don't care. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right, oh, go forth, have fun. Everyone should be in their breakout rooms. You, you is a uh, almost. All right, let me put you in a room. Sorry about that. Don't know how. Uh, one second, Harry. I'll get you in a room. Uh, Harry left me. He's still, yeah, he's still he there? just had a click. Okay, you got me in room okay. two, right? You put yeah, no, but it was just okay. for the two of you to be together. That's all. For the two of us to be together. Yeah, for you and Seth. Do you want to? Uh -oh. you want to go into? A, you want to go into a room as well? No, I don't want to. Uh, I just I don't want to influence them. And then I'm telling them they have five minutes, right? Yep. All right. So I'll go into room two. That because you did say six people, so I'll go into room two. Hold on, but room two has no one else in it, so I need to give you into a room. No, room two has five people in. Okay, go for it. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So that's the that's the what they see. If you have five minutes, all right, good. Excellent. And then I will bring them back into this main room. At the end of five minutes. At the end of five minutes, and we're gonna then I'm gonna show this slide, and that's what. The, and then we're gonna give them ninety seconds. It's all, yeah, so we, we're right on time. Then there's only two groups. So mm -hmm. we'll give them uh, ninety seconds each to give us their stories. Mm -hmm. their stories. And then and, if you would let uh, them know that I'm gonna do the green at. Let let, let me just uh, make sure I have this available to me first before I say this stuff. So no, I do not have my green. So let me. Upload it, that image. Actually, let me see if I change to the other device. Recording in progress. Oh, sorry. Uh, I wanted to see if I would show virtual background. Yes. I'm seeing you in as Evelyn and as Maurice, which is interesting. Well, what you're going to do is you'll have a timer 
which is going to be this one, uh, pin the timer and uh, oh. Is that green now for you completely, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I see the green. All right, so that's going to be the timer. And I'm going to be your Zoom master on a different computer. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, my setup here is really like, you know, well, I wanted to take a picture. I should actually show you my, my, my uh, the layout here that I have. It's one, two, three, four, five different monitors. One, no, three. Okay, so I have my television um, with your Zoom, right? So I can share a screen. And mm -hmm. then I have the two different computers, one for the timer, which gives a virtual background of its own, and then actually one that I'm using to share a screen from. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Look at all that technology. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. I have to hire you, Maurice. <laughs> you know, I geek out. I mean, I totally, which is why when you're when you like, you're uncomfortable. Oh, don't worry. I got you. I, yeah, this is like my, my little heaven. We'll take a picture. Hello, Maurice. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So how many time, much time do they have left? Uh... They have exactly two minutes. So let me just give a two minute warning. Two minute warning. You'll have to teach me Two how to minutes. do that. You just chat. You just go into the breakout room and put in a, that a message. Is that how you? It, do it gives me a, a screen to do it from here, mm -hmm. um, on the to broadcast to all. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I want to. Sorry, the headset came up there. I, um, I mean, yeah, that's okay. It's just show, show that I have, I need some sugar, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know Wave it's again late. For me. I haven't even eaten yet. Wave again for me. <laughs> Wave gotta for go me. Out for, for a drink afterwards. Wave, Seth. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. I was, I was writing some notes. Prestigious note taker. Right. And it's one minute gone down. They're going to get. Um... Mm -hmm. They're going to get another. Yeah, I'm trying to tell them to do that. Can you remind them uh, to make sure they have a team name and a story title? That's all, because it's, it's better that way. And an occupational group. Well, I'm sure they have that. I hope. All right. So I'm going to do that. Seth, tell me one more time. We're looking for everyone to have a team name. On. What is your team name? What, Oops. And, Should yeah. be. Excuse me. Uh, what's two? Two is the story title. Those are the. Um, is the story title and three? And three is your occupational group. What's your occupational group, right? Right. Okay. And who uh -huh. are your. Yeah, they have to announce that they're team members, they're authors, they're, who, what's, who, who's on your team. Who is on your team? Got and it. And the story synopsis, the story, the story synopsis. What is the story synopsis? Okay, so when you introduce it, I'll make sure to put the questions up uh, so that they'll have it available yeah. one at well, a time. Well, I'll have this, this slide will be on, they'll see this slide, but I just wanted to make sure that they don't leave their breakout room without those things. Oh, once I sent the oh. close 
in 12 seconds. It doesn't give me the option. Oh, okay. to break. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no big deal. That's okay. All right. We'll They'll be all them. coming back in about five seconds. And then we'll give me let them know that we may go over. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah just you know. I think it's okay to give them. I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them like thirty extra seconds to get their stuff together before the before the spokesperson. So, so I'll just so if you if you have a a card, a thirty second card. Uh, that would be your green light. Yeah, the green light, and then I'll. I'll tell them then then we'll we'll have team one spokesman and team two spokesman with them up. And you're on. Is everyone that coming back into the uh yes? Portal? Yep. Well, welcome back from the, your virtual breakout rooms to your virtual main stage. Good to see you again. So did everyone have fun? Don't stop the fun. Yes. Fun, you had the fun? One thumb or two thumb worth of fun. Yeah, two, good. All right, so you, so you see this slide, I'm gonna give you, uh, Maurice is gonna give you 30 seconds to put your stuff together before you pitch, before the spokesman pitches the story. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds from now to get it together. Make sure you have a team name, occupational group, team members names, story title, and story synopsis. And you'll have 90 seconds total to do all that, but right, but let's give you 30 seconds now to, to, to wrap it up. All right, so go for it, Maurice. I added it in the chat. And do you want to share screen again, or are we going to go ahead and use the gallery so we can all see one another? I think it's, it's okay. Yes. I'm seeing everyone. Oh, okay. Hold on. Everyone smile. All right. Okay. So who would like to go first? Who are the two spokesmen? Raise your hand. Jim, me, I'm one. And Evelyn, Evelyn, you, Evelyn you're, you're always the leader. I was, I was voluntold when I walked into the room late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So does everyone understand? So they have 90 seconds. So uh, who wants to go first, Jim or Evelyn? We stop having screen share. Jim can go first. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks, Evelyn. It's very kind of you. <laughs> All right, Jim, up first. Hi, everybody. Uh, our team name is the Flybirds, and our store, our occupation, we're flight attendants. And we have what sounds like a, a bit of a, a terror story, but in honestly, I, I, I think it's more of a comedy. The title of our story is Chaos on Flight 502. Scary in nature, but Hang with us, we think you might enjoy this tale. Our authors are uh, myself, Barb, Harry, Ron, Indira, and Xing Ping. And we have a group of flight attendants here who have had really a rough go of it lately. They've had some, some crazy passengers, some rough air. It, it hasn't been a fun couple of trips and they're really hoping that things are gonna settle down on their latest journey. But in their midst is a psychiatrist who seems to need a bit of his own psychiatrist, if you know what I mean. And he's caused a lot of trouble amongst our group. And we think a lot of it has to do with everybody wearing a mask and people just want to go on vacation, but nobody can really understand what's being said. They're sweating, they're having trouble breathing. The pilot is begging for people to just please calm down and please take your seats. But it's basically, as you know from the title, chaos on flight 502. I don't know how much longer, I think I get a yellow. I think we're good. Yeah. All right. Well done, Jim. Fantastic. <laughs> That was, fun. Can... that was great. That was great, Jim. Well, what was I don't your think name? I'm going to be able to top you, but here we go. All right, oh. go, wait, wait, go, wait, Jim. What was your what was your team what was your team name again? Uh, Flybirds. Flybirds. 
Got it. All right. All right. Excellent, Flybird. All right. So, Evelyn, you're you're up. Thank you so much. So, the name of my team is the Lumberjacks, and that's um no excuse me. We are the Heartwood. H e a r t wood. We have a lot of heart, and our occupation is lumberjacks. We're all lumberjacks. The let me see what is the title. Our story title is. Uh oh, I lost my paper. Here we go. It's catching my breath. Now we're a bunch of lumberjacks, but we kind of like the environment, which is kind of strange because lumberjacks kind of knock everything down, right? But this is what happened. We came upon, as a group, a piece of bad art. And then the silence was stunned when, and broken when suddenly we saw a mess, a complete mess of trees knocked down everywhere. And we were stunned. We were like, what the heck happened here? And we realized that what it was, was that they had cut all of these trees down just to make a highway to the mall. And we were like really upset, first of all, because we were all we were all union lumberjacks and nobody discussed it with us, you know? So like we're unionized. You're supposed to discuss this stuff. You're not supposed to just go and do it, right? So we're like already upset about that. And we're all looking at this. We're ready to like, you know, think, what are we going to do? So we came up with a plan. We're going to put the trees back on the path they made. So we're going to block it. But just as we're in the midst of doing all of this, we noticed there's a tiger behind us. And one of our lumberjacks begins to run and the tiger's running after her. And she, because she's a lumberjack, she can climb the only tree that's probably left that wasn't knocked down. But she goes up there, tigers can't climb. So they're clawing and scratching at, at the bark of the tree, but she was safe up on the tree. And then she looks over and she sees this beautiful sunset and she's able to just catch her breath and that is our story and we're sticking to it thank you so much <laughs> all right heartwood nice was, was was that was that fun working together as a team building something together who knows you didn't know what was going to come out of it it's just like pop here it is it, it's fun right to work in a, in a collaborative uh, environment right? prime time pitch time yeah, exactly. All right. So well done, both teams. I have no prize. If I had prizes, like, well, oh, actually, oh, actually, I do have some prizes. Hold on. Let's, 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 let's wrap this thing up. Let's wrap it up. So I told you I'm the Sherpa. I love climbing mountains. I climbed the uh, page to stage mountain uh, with my 20 ex bold explorers last year. You know, if you practice improv, you become present, cutting edge of time. You can read the room much better. You could create a culture of uh, collaboration. Uh, output, high performing teams, collaboration. It's all about leadership excellence. You're an excellent leader just by practicing improv with your team. So what's the next step? I invite you to join my team of bold, Improv to improve and explorers. I'm doing it again. I'm climbing. Sherpa sets climbing in 2022. So you don't have to. There's no, there's no, uh, there's nothing that says you have to do it. Uh, but if you want to do it, if you want to practice improv with me, we'll do it in a, in a Zoom format. And if you want to get a checklist of bad art, I'll certainly send it to you. All you have to do is put your email in the chat box now, and I'll send you the checklist for bad art for Toastmasters, lessons from bad art for Toastmasters. And if you want to know what Improv to Improve is all about in a workshop format in 2022, just also put eye to eye in the chat box. It'll be fun. You wanna make your future self proud. You wanna do it today. And that's how you do it. Put your email, I to I. We'll have some fun. Who doesn't want to have fun? This is just the beginning, guys. I'm all about fun. I'm not funny. Uh, well, some people say I'm funny, but I'm, that's not the point. 
we, we're going to have fun. We're going to improve our powers of improv. We're going to be in the present moment. And we're going to be able to change our careers and our lives just by doing improv together. Table topics together. All right. So appreciate it for everybody who has said what is this crazy engine you're doing. But thanks very much. District 46, thank you so much for coming to my webinar. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did. Let's stay in touch and let's improv to improve in 2022 together. All right. Thank you so much, Seth. That was a great exercise. I appreciate that everyone took the time from their busy schedule, especially in the middle and beginning of our holiday season to attend. Thank you again. I put in Seth's information, but you can always reach out to Seth through his email if you want more information about any of his sessions, his workshops. We will be having our next educational session. Stay tuned. January 8th is our winter symposium and it's called Emerging with Excellence. You will hear more about that soon. We have the 2021 World Championship of Public Speaking, Verity Price coming to be our keynote. So it's gonna be a lot of fun folks. I expect all of you to sign up and spread the word. And also, if you are a club officer, training has begun. Our next Super Saturday is on December 11th. So please visit the district website for all of this information so that you can sign up for our educational sessions and our training. And I wish all of you a wonderful evening and a happy holiday. Thank you all for attending. Have a great evening, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank when we everyone. close, there will be a survey. Please make, take a minute to answer the survey as we close in the browser. Right. When you close, it'll pop up.